All right, we are going to go live from Canada, mastermind with Neil Schwartz and our guest, David Arustanian. How'd I do? Hello. All right, good job. Excellent. David, we're going to use this not only for the YouTube video purposes of training, but we're also launching a new podcast on this. So um, welcome. And uh, we're, we're very excited to have you on board. I actually had uh, an opportunity to meet you uh, for a few minutes at uh, Mike's uh, uh, Superstar Retreat here in the last 30 or 40 days. Uh, it was a great treat. Um, you did a great presentation, and I was really looking forward to chatting with you a little bit today and talking a little bit, um, masterminding a little bit with our group. Can you give us a, just a little Reader's Digest version of uh, where you work, how long in the business, sure. kind of the way you um, have developed your business so far? Sure. Thanks. So first off, thank you for having me here. Obviously, I'm excited to be here. Um, it's crazy because I've, I've watched a bunch of your YouTube videos, and I didn't know I was going to be invited to be on this. So I'm, I'm really honored to, to be here. And it's really nice to see a bunch of faces that I actually know personally. So. Um, a little bit about me. Uh, I moved to Phoenix, Arizona on Thanksgiving Day of 2015, um, and I got my license. I think the quickest I could get it was like the first week of January 2016 uh, in Arizona. I was licensed in Massachusetts, uh, basically had my license, but didn't really do much with it. Um, just one of those, you know, part-time agents, just kind of helping friends and family. And when I moved out here, I just watched my bank account just kind of doing this. And I was like, okay, I got to do something. So I'm like, you know what? I'm gonna. I called um, one of the top agents in Massachusetts, and I was like, hey, Nick, what do you think I should do? And he's like, hey, man, you know, I think you should get your license, but go all in. Like, if you do it, go all in and do it. So I said, you know what? I'm gonna do that. So I got my license, and immediately signed up with coaching with Mike Ferry Coaching. I think it was May of 2016. I signed up with Mike Ferry Coaching, and um, first year in Arizona, we did. You know, I did 15 transactions. Second year, I did 29. Third year, I did 77. I'm pulling up my numbers real quick. I think I did 70, 73 third year. And then I went down to 59. Then um, in 2020, I did 101. And last year, 119. And this year, we're on track for 153. That's fantastic. So you started really with a known database or sphere of influence at the time when you were doing the 15, right? My database was the one friend that I knew here and his agent who also was my agent when I bought my house, sight unseen. Wow. That was about it. Wow. And uh, so then you went into uh, door knocking, open houses. What 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 did you work on? Expires? Yeah. So before I got with Mike, which was in May, um, I was doing open houses. And honestly, I thought that was a, a really good way of, of getting business, uh, uh, you know, because basically what I started doing is I was making my calls from the open houses. So I was sitting at the open house, I had the signs out, and I was literally just making calls. Um, so I set up shop in these houses for five days at a time. But the majority of my business ended up coming from expireds, canceled, and for sale by owners. And um, it's crazy when people say like, well, what are you doing differently? It's like, well, I'm not doing anything differently. I'm literally doing everything I'm taught by the micro organization to do. And we did have a lot more expireds and canceled in 2016 than we do than we did last year. But now our expireds and canceled are through the roof. So um, yeah, and I'm in Scottsdale, Arizona and I work for Sotheby's by the way. Right, right. Uh, so let me ask you something, David. Um, when you say you follow the system or follow a system, uh, does that mean you you practice on a daily basis? Does that mean you you uh, role play? Uh, did you learn the, the expired script or did you cut any corners because you're so handsome? Yeah, I, I wish I could use my looks to uh, to do this production. Of course, at this point, I surround myself with a good team. 
Um, but having said that, 100% practice and role play. I still have five role plays a week that I do. Um, I still practice my scripts. I Last year, I was writing out my listing presentation script. I think I did it every single day of the year. I didn't miss a single day writing it out. So not just the work days. Not just the work days. I did it on Christmas Day, too. Wow. So, um, yeah, because it's like my philosophy with real estate is you're either all in or you're all out. So if you want to do this, you got to go all in. If you want to do it part time, you might as well not do it at all. And that's because if you're not all in, you can't reap the real rewards here. You're always going to be what, what you're saying is like a little frustrated with the game. You're going to have mountains and valleys, mountains and valleys, like every other agent. And, you know, I have buyers agents that work with me, buyers agents that worked with me in the past, and they've been going through this. And obviously it's frustrating, um, you know, like it's challenging, right? To have a paycheck or maybe a good paycheck, a few good paychecks, and then to not have any for a few months. I mean, that's just not how I want to live my life. Got it. Got it. That's fantastic. I, I, I want to stay focused just for a, a minute or two more on the, the first and second year of your business. What did, I mean, look, you had the mindset to do the work, but there had to be days you didn't want to do it or days you were frustrated with it. I'll bet you there was even days you didn't even get a lead. For sure. <laughs> Everybody goes through that. How, how do you deal with that, David? So we have to have a super strong mindset. So my mindset is I'm not going to let a prospect's response to my prospecting determine the outcome of me achieving my goals. Okay. So I have goals. I said, I have a schedule. I have to follow that. Right. I have people that I'm accountable to. So I have to make sure I'm producing. And then at the end of the day, it's like, well, what do you want for yourselves? Like, why are we doing this? Why are we, for me, it was, you know, it was a sacrifice. It still is a sacrifice. I don't know, Neil. I don't know if I should even say this, but I used to prospect till 830 at night. It's okay to say it. It's not terrible. I don't care. I used to prospect <laughs> it till 830 at night. I mean, some days I've even, I even say till nine o'clock and there were agents that were leaving the office at seven and they're like, you're, you're crazy. And you know what? Right now, Thankfully, I'm number one in this office. It's a big office. This isn't a small office. This is the South of East branch, all luxury, a bunch of luxury agents in here. And we outproduce all of them. And some of these were the people that were telling me I was crazy in 2016 when I was prospecting. Uh, first one in, last one out almost every single day. Got it. That's what it takes, right? I think so. You know, um, I we came to this country, like Mike, I don't know. I think Mike kind of wanted me to chat a little bit about this, but I figured I'd, I'd, I'd say it on this. So we came to this country as refugees, okay? Like my family had a hundred bucks to their name. My dad worked as a guy that pumped gas in Massachusetts. My mom worked in a basement of a bakery baking cakes. Um, and, you know, I just have this, like, I think it's like this work ethic that, you know, if my parents sacrificed everything they could for me, like if I don't produce, I'm letting them down. Like why did they do that? Why did they change their whole lives around for us? And then for us to not achieve anything like right now, I can, yeah, I, they can do whatever they want, you know, like that's the beauty of this whole thing. And yes, it took a lot of sacrifice, but like, what else are you going to do? Like, I don't know. I, I just, I'm super focused. And for me, it's like tunnel vision. And some people think I'm crazy, but it's all good because those are the people that in like five, 10 years are going to be saying the same stuff that the agents were telling me in 2016. And now they're like, oh my gosh, you're number, you know, and it's like, we're just, we just keep pushing. Got it. David, where did you come from? Well, so we came here as refugees from Moscow. I was born in uh, Baku and Azerbaijan, which is a, which is a Muslim country. Um, and we were Christians. So we were basically through the religious war, um, you know, pushed out of the country. We basically had to leave everything. I understand. Um, and I'm then sorry. we moved to Moscow with, with family. And then America took us in as, as refugees. So American Red Cross, uh, literally, I mean, we grew, I grew up in a basement, like in a ghetto. Wow. You know? Wow. Well, welcome. I'm glad you're here. And I'm, I'm not glad you had to go through that, but you had to go through that to get here, right? 
I think so. And, you know, I think uh, a lot of people take it for granted, like what they have. And um, I never want my family or anybody surrounding me to go through what we went through. Right. So I don't want to go back to that. So that's why I keep pushing. Like if, again, you can either, you can either be, you can either be a have or a have not like the choices in your hands is whatever you want to do with your time. David, um, the question I would ask you is you, you've gone through some hardship. You, your family's had some hardship. You, you, I'm sure ran into days where you didn't have enough to eat, let alone, you know, the television program. And you played soccer with a can instead of a ball. You know, I get all of that. But do you have to go through that, in your opinion, to become the you that you're be, you are? Or can some of us who didn't have that upbringing be inspired by someone like you who had to do that and can, can still succeed? Do, do we have a shot, David? 100%. And nobody on this call wants to go through that. Unfortunately, I feel as though some people almost like have to go through that and their backs get against the wall. And then they're like, oh my gosh, I got to produce. I got to move forward. But for me, it's like, why not learn from other people? <laughs> if you if you hear somebody talking about something and you don't want that, then don't do what they did to be in that position. Do the exact opposite. It's like the 180, 180, degree, 180 degree approach, like do the exact opposite of what everybody else is doing. Right like prospecting, you know, 60,000 agents in Phoenix and Scottsdale and the sellers, but, you know, expired call. Oh, you're the 35th agent, 35, there's 60,000 agents. You know, it's like, we're doing good. Exactly. <laughs> David, you're with Sotheby's. Um, what's your average sales price? Um, probably about 950. 950. Okay. So, um, What's the most expensive listing you've taken? 10 million. Was that a cold call? It was, expired call. That's where I wanna go with this right now. Let's okay? go. All right, here's what I wanna talk about. I wanna talk about, it's an attitude, not necessarily anything else, isn't it? You hear, you hear from agents all the time, you know, you, got, you can't cold call, you can't phone canvas, the high end, you can't, the high end, the high end, the high end. Here you're you're making it happen, you know, from day one. Congratulations. 100%. And it took time, okay? My average sales price was not 950 in 2016. My average sales price was a lot lower than that. I don't remember what it was. Um, it took time, but but it's the progressive realization of a worthwhile goal. Like we're our my goal in in 2016 wasn't like, oh my god, I got to get a 5 million dollar listing. Michael was like, how the heck do I get to like 100K a year? Right. You know? How do I reach out to as many people as possible and get to 100K a year so I can have an assistant? Well, in that case, it was a transaction coordinator to help me with my files so that next year I can double this. And, and, and literally that's what happened. I mean, it was a double every year for the first three years. Right. So 119 closed transactions in 2021? Last year, yeah. Right. What kind of gross income does that bring into you? Uh, let me see here. I was at like one five last year. Okay. And at 153, what's the gross projection? Um, projection is just over 2 million, I think this year. Got it. Yeah, 2.2. .2. Your parents are still alive? They are. They Could live in be... Scottsdale now. Sorry? They live in Scottsdale. Scottsdale. No more basements. No more basements. Good <laughs> for you. And I suspect you help them with purchasing that or renting that. So they're renting. And, um, you know, uh, the, the beautiful thing is I, I allow my father to invest with me. Um, so I bring him a lot of really cool opportunities. And we have a development we're doing right now uh, for multifamily in downtown Phoenix. And it's exciting. It's exciting to be able to give back to your family. Good for you. Congratulations. Fantastic. So how did you approach going to the higher end? I mean, you didn't start with that. Clearly, 
yeah. uh, in the very beginning. But what was the progression? How did that work for you? Yeah. So in essence, it's just as soon as you get one, you can you need to leverage that listing. That's what I call it. I call leveraging a listing. So what else can we do with this listing other than just get it sold? So what I started doing was I started focusing on just so just sold calls. I door knock the neighborhood. When I door knock the neighborhood, I have all I have is a business card. So business card with, hey, we just listed your neighbor's home, five million, whatever it is. And it's crazy because I, I remember door knocking and maybe I wasn't as good. Maybe I'm a little bit better now, but I'm not that much better. There's nothing I'm doing that different now than I was doing in 2015, uh, 2016, 17. It's just the accumulation effect, which of course I can get to later. Um, but I, you know, I walked through some pretty rough neighborhoods in 2016 and I had, you know, door slammed on me and yelling at me and whatever. Um, you go to these affluent neighborhoods, you don't even get a lot of that. It's easier to door knock in an affluent neighborhood than it is in a less affluent uh, neighborhood, in, in my opinion. Interesting. Great thought. Excellent. So, but you had to go through this to get to that, right? Yeah. I mean, it, it you know, the more business you do, the more confident you become because you have more experience. So you're more competent and you're more confident. Um, and that's, that's just part of growth, in my opinion. So I, I don't have, you know, I, I'm not afraid of the outcome. I mean, I don't really, it's not like I don't care, but it doesn't really affect me what they say. Because every person that says no, it's getting you one step closer to a person that's going to say yes because it's a numbers game and uh, it really is. I look at it as a family help every single time, but at the end of the day, if, if a family doesn't need our services, that's fine. Maybe they don't need it now. They may need it in the future, but I'm looking at, I'm looking at who can we help now? There's a ton of people that are going to do something within the next week in our area. Our, so our goal is to find them. Find them. Uh, uh, another thing I did, um, as far as helping myself break into luxury listings is I, I, I got a co-list with me. So I brought somebody in. I said, hey, you know, I got this guy on the phone and, and he wants to meet with me, you know, Monday at, at three o'clock. Would you come with me? And we co-listed. So it's like, okay, no problem. So we have, we split the income, which is, you know, $100,000 on some deals. I'm, I'm okay with that. Splitting it $50,000 a piece. He, he helps with his numbers because I needed a little bit of a boost sometimes, right? I, I this, this guy did more luxury than I did. He was the top agent in the office at the time. I'm like, you know what? Let's work together. You service it. I bring it in. Okay. I bring it in. You service it. We split the expenses. We split the, the income. Everybody's happy. Good job. Excellent. So your style today, um, does it require... A, a big spend to get some of these listings. Talk to us about that a little bit. No chance. Yeah, no chance. Our our expenses are super. My my expenses are are of course the staff that we have, the support we have. Um, I spend most of my money on my team. Um, we're not doing anything crazy. I mean, honestly, Neil, people don't even believe me. It's like we. I I do. So I have a. Average price point in Scottsdale is 450, 500, not Scottsdale, in Phoenix Metro is 450 to 500,000. Mine's like 950, maybe a million, 900 to a million. So I do do, I do do images. I do do Twilight, right? Sometimes we do aerial shots. Uh, we do video. We do Matterport uh, virtual tour. But that's it. I mean, I might do some just as just sold mailers. But it's really minor. I mean, we run a super lean business. Um, a few years ago, I was I was spending some money on on marketing and advertising. I worked with my coach to to diminish that because it's not what you make; it's what you keep. Okay. And a really big lesson I've learned in this business is I know agents that sell 100 homes a year and they're literally like broke. I mean, right. they're making they're making they're working crazy and they're making 100 150 thousand dollars a year, but they're working like you know somebody should be making three, $400,000 a year if they weren't in real estate and they were putting in that many hours. Yeah, because they're so, spending too much money. Spending way too much money. They're making good money, but they're spending a ton of money or they're cutting their commission or, or whatever they're doing to not provide the best service for, for, for the client. Because a lot of the times, all the stuff we're spending, it doesn't benefit our client. 
it benefits, it, it tries to benefit us, right? Like my goal isn't, I like to leverage my listings, but at the end of the day, my goal is to sell that property. I don't get paid until the property sells. Right. And I don't have a happy, uh, happy client and a raving fan un until the property is closed. So let's talk about happy clients and raving fans. I mean, that that's one of the focuses that you talked about on stage a little bit. What does that mean? Um, how, do you, how do you develop that? Well, um, by providing good service, customer service, um, and in my opinion, doing the job or going above what you're supposed to do, um, you develop a raving fan. And a raving fan, and, and, and I think the book is called Raving Fans or something like that. Really good book. I actually have a, a physical copy of it. It's, it's somebody that's a client for life because I think it was the speaker before me actually that said, he said, you can make a sale or you can make a client for life. You decide what that is through your customer service. Right. So we need to, as agents, like they have no idea what we do. They, the, the public has no idea. The public thinks we put a house on, on the MLS and then we get a commission check. Like that's it. They, they don't understand what we're doing. They're, they, a lot of the times will have questions and our goal is to preempt those questions, meaning give them the answer to their question before it even becomes a question. So I work with my team at this point, uh, used to be me, but now it's, you know, listing coordinator, admin and transaction coordinator that, uh, that helps me with all this. That's great. So occasionally you run into a client that wants a big, gorgeous, high glossy brochure because they saw one someplace, right? How do you deflect that? So it depends. If I would say if it's a high price point, fine, give them the brochure. I mean, literally, if our commission's 3% on a one $5 million property, it's $45,000. You know, obviously we have our broker splits, which are very necessary um, to help pay for office expense and so on. We have, you know, our we got to pay our team. But I don't mind putting together a, you know, a little glossy brochure for somebody if, if it makes sense. Uh, at the end of the day, you have to explain to your client what you're going to do to get the home sold. And as part of our 20 point plan of action that we give to everybody, glossy brochure, I don't even think is one of them. <laughs> so we can ask them, would you like us to do a glossy brochure? Or would you like us to spend three hours on the phone every single day looking for a buyer for your home? What would you prefer? Got it. Very wow. simple. And I keep it super simple. I mean, a lot of agents I talk to, they're like, no, you're not telling me the truth. Like, tell me exactly what you do. And I keep it super, super simple because this is a very simple business. It's just not easy. Got it. Got it. So um, is there, do you have a particular close or favorite objection handler that when they say this, you say that, and it generally works for you. Is there anything like that out there for uh, David? You know, I, there isn't. There's nothing crazy about what I do, and that's what I want everybody to understand. I'm just a normal. Well, I'm not. No, I'm not normal. I'm weird, but I am <laughs> a, a focused and you know a high producing, energetic, enthusiastic person that is pushing as hard as he can every single day for his clients. I mean, I'm up at 5.30 and five sometimes and I'm going to bed eight, nine or 10 o'clock, you know? So, and I can chat about my morning routine if, 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 if you like, but there's nothing crazy. I mean, I like the, I like giving people options, you know, are you typically available afternoons or evenings? I like, you can start high and say, you're typically available weekends or weekdays. What works better for you? Well, weekends work better. Weekends, great. And on a weekend, are you typically available afternoons or evenings? What's typically best for you? Well, afternoons are great. Well, how about I stop by and see you Saturday at three o'clock? And if you need to reschedule that, well, we can reschedule at any time. And was that, is that fair enough? I mean, we keep it so simple. Like there's nothing. I remember I was so nervous about jumping on the phones and talking to people. But at the end of the day, an expired or canceled listing, they need us more than we need them. That's really how I look at it. And if your mindset is, is, is positive, like that you're trying to help this person, they can tell in our tonality uh, that what we're doing is genuine and um, they'll hire you. Great, good stuff, very cool. What's your superpower, David? What do you think oh. it is? So yesterday I was in the office and 
I was sitting with my listing coordinator in the room in the room next door, and I was like, Megan, what's my superpower? I, I, I need this. I had no idea. Because <laughs> I'm like, I'm pretty, um, I don't know, I'm just a basic guy. So I was like, well, what do you think I should say? And and uh, what do you mean? She's like, well, what, what makes me special? What makes me different is what they're asking me. So she said, you're really good. And I'm quoting her. You're really good at keeping emotions out of a transaction. You are not emotionally attached to the outcome. Your drive and motivation is supernatural and inspiring. And I would say that, yeah, I would agree with that just based on the last 20, 30 minutes we've been together. And, and, then, and then she said, you're like a human punching bag, but it doesn't, nothing phases you, right? Wow. Because a lot of the times we may, I feel as though we need to tell people the truth, okay? And sometimes they may not like what we have to say. So sometimes we could be that punching bag where they, they hit us with, you know, something they're upset about or, or whatever it may be. But um, I just don't allow it to phase me. I mean, do I get tired at times? Of course I do. Like I'm, I'm, an, I'm a human, I'm like, I'm a regular dude. But I also understand that I have to keep my mindset strong um, and stay focused on my goals because there's a lot more people to help. That's great, David. I appreciate that, it's a great answer. Hey, so are you open to taking a few questions right now? Sure, whatever anybody Absolutely. needs. Absolutely, all right. Questions for David, please. Hey. Who wants to go first? David, Miguel Solar here. It's good to, good to see you again, buddy. Miguel. How's it going? What's hey, up? So, so I'm going to bullet point three questions. Contacts per day, how many? So I'm pretty low right now. Um, I'm probably somewhere around 20, 22 a day right now. Got it. Okay. So that could be up to 30 sometimes. So 20 to, 20 to 30, something like that. Yep. I would say anywhere between 15 and 25. Evening calls. How many, how many evenings do you put aside for, for evening calls? So right now, not many because I'm typically on an appointment. So my goal with my coach is to have one appointment a day at a minimum. If I set one appointment a day, that's my goal. And I try to do it early in the day, like before 10 o'clock, ideally. Um, I, I know you've been doing this for a while, obviously, but when I was the first three years, dude, I used to do a ton of evening calls. Um, it's like, what else are you going to do? You know, like if I don't have an appointment to go on, what else am I going to do? I, I go to the gym in the morning so I can go home and watch TV or I can spend some time on the phones and try to connect with some people that need our help. So um, to, to answer your question, I used to do it probably three, four days a week. Got it. Okay. Well, that, that's, uh, I appreciate that. And then Saturday weekends, do you do any like dedicated weekend calls or um, weekend calls are great. Honestly, I know, I know Mike says to take weekends off, um, but I, I do, I do work weekends, not crazy. I'm not, I'm not in here all day working, but um, I think weekend calls are great. Um, I used to call three times a day, mornings, afternoons, and evenings um, when I was, when I had less, less business to do. Now um, I'm fairly, I'm fairly stacked. I'm getting a lot of referrals um, uh, from past clients and so on. So I'm, I'm blessed to, to, to be in that position. Thank you. Last month, uh, you and I had a conversation or a month and a half ago, two months ago. And I remember you said it was the biggest, I don't know if it was week or month, but I think you took like 19 listings, was it? Yeah, 19 listings taken in June. Okay. So the, the most I've taken was seven. And then, but my question is this is, I mean, I feel like there's a threshold that I have that as soon as I get to that number, I start getting nervous and, and like overwhelmed. And so what was your mindset when you went from five to seven to 10 and then 19? It, it, there's something blocking me here or some. Yeah. Um, I forgot who said it to me. I forgot which agent was at, at the Mike Ferry event, but it was like, it's, it's being uncomfortable as part of growth. And so putting ourselves in these situations where we're, we're kind of just trying to keep up with what's happening it's just part of the process, man. And there's nothing that I can tell you that's like a silver bullet. That's it's like, I just, I just know if I don't go back on my word, right. That's, that's what I know. So for me, man, I, I will work until midnight if I have to, if like I help my team, my listing coordinator in June and July was like verge of breakdown, you know? So I was like, you know what? I got to step up and I got to help her or hire. 
And I'm okay hiring if I have to, but I asked her what she would prefer. And she said, I don't think we need that right now. So I said, okay, you know what? I'm going to respect your, your wishes and, and we'll do that. Eventually we probably will need that if I keep that up, but it's, that wasn't a normal month for me. Am I, am I saying it's not doable again? I'm, I'm not saying that it's probably doable or more, but um, just typically like a little bit of an abnormal month. Yeah. That's great, man. I appreciate it. Thank you. Yes, sir. All right. Good questions. Thank you, Miguel. Uh, questions for David. Who going to go next? Hand up or just talk? Uh, David, so great to see you. Hi. And I just want to say great to see all the Neil Schwartz people too at the retreat face to face. Thank you for that. Thanks for the um, hug. <laughs> I love you guys and I, I, I miss you whenever I'm, I'm not here. Um, David, I noticed, um, uh, first of all, your, your charisma on the stage. It, um, it's, I think it's one of your superpowers, just FYI. Thank you. <laughs> Thanks a lot. Thank um, um, I noticed that you said that you got to the 70s and then you went back. Yeah, good catch. And then, and then it, and it just flew from there, point on. So what happened that you had to kind of step back or? Yeah, that's a great question. I'm glad you brought it up and I'm glad you caught it. So um, I went, yeah, you're right. Let me pull up the numbers. I went from 15 to, four, to 73, okay. yep, to 59, then to 101. So you were like, what happened with the 59? I lost my buyer's agent. So she switched over to new home sales um, and she's actually uh, the number one Richmond American new home sales agent right now in our area. Um, she crushes it and she still reaches out to me like every few weeks and is just like so thankful for us giving her the opportunity. And I mean, a lot of what I taught her was what Neil teaches all of you guys and what Mike teaches uh, everybody too. So um, she was just really fortunate for that, uh, surrounding herself with the right people, the right company. Um, but that's what happened. So she, so she cycled out and I was working buyers. And so... It, and it took me a while to find a good replacement for her. Um, I cycled through a, a lot of a lot of people because I, I like to. I'm really careful with with who I surround myself with because it will affect my production, but also my mindset and my emotions and all that. I, I can't allow that. I can't allow any negativity. So it was really tough to find a replacement for Ari. But uh, right now we have two really good buyers agents that are working with us. One just signed up uh, last week, so pretty excited to see her grow. Great. Thank you so Good much. Question, Tom. Thank you so much. Okay, other questions for Dave. Oh, David had a question for you in the chat box. What's your morning routine consist of and how do you prepare for the day, David? Yeah. From David. Yeah, and of course, keep in mind, guys, this has changed over the years. As you as your team grows, you know, things change. But um, at the end of the day, the, the, the fundamentals are the same. I still wake up, I go to the gym or play basketball, something along those lines, get my blood flow going, uh, take my vitamins, my supplements. And uh, I'm in the office typically by seven to 7.15. Um, and I'm able to catch up on admin. I do do some admin before I even get into the office. Um, if I have to, just, just to take care of a few button, button up a few tasks. And then I have a role play from 7.15 to 7.30. And then I typically jump on the phones right around 7.30, 7.35. Um, and that'll carry me up till used to be later, used to be 11 or so. Now it probably carries me up until about 10.30 when I have a check-in with my listing coordinator. I'll have a check-in with my transaction coordinator, um, help them help them answer any questions. Oh, and I'm sorry, um, let me add, accountability is huge. So I have an accountability for um, getting a workout in. I have an accountability for doing my daily affirmations. Um, I have accountability for being in the office on time. I have an accountability for um, starting on the phones at 7.30. And um, I always keep my goals in front of me. I didn't talk much on this about it, but I did do a little bit on stage and I have a bunch of notes. If anybody wants the notes, reach out to me and um, I will email you my notes because Mike carried me in, in a totally different direction. I, I, I had no idea what he was gonna ask me on stage. Um, I actually have a bunch of notes I can share with people. I write down my notes every night. And the other thing I'll mention, sorry to make this so long, but your morning starts the night before, okay? So the night before I write out what I have to do tomorrow. I write out my goals. 
I write out what I tend, what I intend to make, what I'm making, how much money I'm making. I write out that my family's healthy, that my team's profitable, um, that I have a strong family bond. So I'm writing out my goals the night before. And that way these thoughts are staying in your mind and you wake up in a better positive mental space. I do the same thing in the morning, by the way, I write down my goals. So we've been talking about this the last couple of three weeks, David, within the organization. And there's two common words that almost every top agent or somebody earning in excess of a million dollars a year talks about all the time. One is intention and the other one is obsession, which I didn't count how many times you talked about intention or obsession sure. during this 30 or 40 minutes, but you've done it 10 or 15 times uh, for, for both of those words. I think that's a commonality in, in super great agents that we all have to look at and identify and work on every single day. So thank you for sharing that again uh, with what you're talking about. It's really good stuff. David, and then, you know, I'll, 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 I'll add on to that. Um, we, we become what we think about, guys. So I'm very intentional. Like when I, when I now, now when I prospect, I have less time to prospect now because you know certain growth spurts within the team. Um, I have a little bit of a leadership role. I have a little bit of a managerial role, and and I have to you know work on that. This is a working. This is we're always working on fixing things and getting better. Um, but I'm very intentional about who I reach out to. You know, I'm, I'm very intentional. I, I, I'm not calling a certain price point anymore because I'm, I'm starting off at a, at a, at a, basically a floor and then, and then going up from there. I'm very intentional. So everything I do about my business, it's all business decisions and everything you guys do in your business has to be a, it's a business decision. Like that's how you have to look at everything. Great, great thoughts. Absolutely. Appreciate that. Um, David. Uh, let me ask you, um, newer agent, kind of where you were a uh, number of years ago, would like to go get to 15 deals or maybe go from 15 deals to 25. What advice would you give them as we are in this quote unquote changed market? I think, and I tell my buyer's agents this too, I'm like, right now is your best opportunity as an agent to push and make something happen. We're seeing agents falling out of the business. We're seeing agents not producing. This is kind of how it was in 2016, 2017. Listings were taking longer to sell. There's more expireds, more canceled. Our job is to get in front of those people and get in the way, like Mike says, just get in the way of the transaction. And that doesn't mean prevent the transaction from happening. It means get the listing or get that buy side and, um, and get it through to closing. So honestly, guys, you have to commit you just have to commit to, to your goals and then set up the right accountability and, and, and execute. And your, your goals have to be bigger than your excuses. Everybody has an excuse. It's like, my goals are way bigger than my excuses. I have no excuses. And now I have a team that I'm accountable to. I mean, if the, these guys are beating me here sometimes to the office, I'm like, okay, I got to step up because <laughs> I'm the leader. You know, they look up to me. Um, so I hope that helps answer your question. It's it so simple. I, and I'm sorry for keeping it so simple, but that's just the person I am. I'm super basic. No, it's all good stuff. Um, great. Thank you. Simple, Let's but go. not easy. <laughs> yeah, it's, it's not easy. easy. It's not easy. That's what Mike says, sim simple, but not easy. Correct. Not everyone wants to hustle and grind. <laughs> yeah. Okay. Other questions for David, please. I have uh, a question. Go ahead. Uh, hi, David. Um, my name is Melissa. Hi. I'm a new agent. And yeah. what are two or three things that I should be doing daily? Okay, so committing to hitting a certain number of contacts every single day. Okay. Having accountability set up to hit your contacts. And you have to have real accountability. Like what I used to do with Michael Young is we'd send each other $500 checks. Okay. And he's like, hey, did you hit your numbers? No. $500 <laughs> gone. Okay. Like $500 to me at that time. And right now is a lot of money. If it was 20, I probably wouldn't care. I'd be like, okay, cash the 20, go for it. But if it's surround yourself with good accountability, people that are positive, 
uh, people that are going to hold you accountable and um, and produce. The other thing I would say is role play and practice and really do this every single day. I used to come into the office at 645 and I'd stay in front of a mirror and practice my listing presentation. Literally, there was nobody in the office. Um, and, and I would just do that every, literally every day. I mean, I remember I'd come into the office, it's, it's dark, I'd leave, it was dark. So I just committed to, to making it happen. And if I can do it, all of you guys can too. Like literally, there's nothing special about me. Yeah, I'm kind of tall, but I'm pretty bald. Like, you know, I have, I have, I have issues, right? Like we're not perfect. So um, just committing it, committing to something and going forward with that. Okay, thank you. Sure. Melissa, great question. David, thank you. I have another quick question. Go ahead, Christina. Um, looks like you are analytical and your personality, is that right? That's right, yeah. So... Looks like you tend to be very, very disciplined, right? How to get to that point to be super disciplined? You know, um, I think Eddie Delgado was my first coach at my carry, and he was like, dude, how are you so disciplined? And I think for me, it's coming from where I came from obviously helps me because I saw the success, right? Like I saw people on stage and I'm like, First, I didn't believe it. And then I started talking to people. One of my first role play partners was Brady Sandal. Like, oh my God, right? And I was like, why is this guy role playing with me? Like, I don't know anything, right? So like, but but I he was one of my mentors. He became one of my mentors. So did Michael Young, you know? And just seeing it, I want it too. I want it too. So um, setting yourself up with goals and then just being super disciplined by getting rid of all your distractions. Like, I don't take calls during the day. If you could see this, it's call forwarding on. This call forwarding is on all day until my staff leaves. I don't take any calls because my goal is to reach out to people, not wait for them to reach out to me. And if they reach out to me, great, because I have Stephanie and she answers the phone and she'll take all your information and say, David will reach right back out to you. And if it's, a, if it's somebody that I need to reach out to, I'll reach out to them immediately. But I got rid of my distractions by being super intentional about it. Does that help? Yes. So you, you pretty much lived your life through systems and methods, right? hundred percent. And I will say I sacrificed a lot of my life. Like, you know, I'm, I'm telling you all this and, but at the end of the day, I, I, I lived it and it was, you know, blood, sweat, and tears. I mean, this isn't, this wasn't easy for me to do. Uh, and it's still not easy. I still grind it out. And it's a good grind. I like it. If I don't, if I'm not talking to people on a daily basis, I don't even think I'm working and I enjoy it. Honestly, I've learned to enjoy it. I used to guys, I used to wake up. This is a crazy story. And I haven't told a lot of people, Neil, and now I'm saying this on YouTube. Uh, I used to wake up, I used to prospect from home. So I had my, you know, my board and I had my computer and, you know, 7.30, I log in, I load, load my numbers up. I'm like, okay, I'm going to call. And I'm nervous. My hands are sweaty. I'm sweating. And then the numbers, um, the dialer wasn't working. And I'm like, yes. Oh my gosh, I don't have to prospect today. And I just like run back and go back into bed. Like, this is what I used to do because I'm no like, we're normal, right? This, it's just a normal response because I didn't really know what to say to people. So I wasn't com confident and I wasn't comfortable on the phones. But once I learned what to say um, and I got over the rejection because at the end of the day, it's not a big deal. Um, I, I, I really learned to embrace it. I think Grant Cardone talks about it. You do something so much that you start to love it. And that's what I did. Good job. Thank you. All right, good stuff. Margaret Sun, go ahead. Hi, David. Thank you so much for your time and sharing. Quick question here. When you start upgrading your luxury listings, most of the you do the prospecting cold call or you just do donor key? Which one you do the most? Yeah, so um, I live in Phoenix, Arizona. It's like 120 sometimes. So <laughs> it's a little hot. So now I'm doing more calling because I am I feel as though I'm a little bit better on the phones than I am uh, and, and more efficient. That's, that's basically what the word I was looking for. Um, but having said that, the both are super powerful. And I think if I'm in front of somebody, especially when I wasn't maybe as good on the phone, getting in front of somebody, it's very hard for them to not respect that. And I would, I go out like this and I got my shoes on, like, which you can't see, but 
you know, I'm literally dressed like this when I go out and I'm sweating and people see that and they're like, wow, like this guy is a hard worker and the right person will respect that and they'll give you business. I remember I was door knocking. It was like 115 degrees. Um, I door knocked a gal. She ended up blowing me off at the door. I gave her a card. She blew me off at the door, shut the door. She's one of my best clients. She ended up calling me the next day. And she's like, hey, I don't know if you remember me. I was the one that shut the door in your face. And I was just not in a good mood. But I'd like you to sell my condo. Sold her condo, helped her buy a house. And she just bought her, um, her another house. Oh, and by the way, she referred me three people from one day of door knocking. One, one bad day, actually. You got the door <laughs> thrown in your face. Door thrown in my face. <laughs> my, 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 my suit was drenched. She's like, I don't know if you remember me. I was the one. I'm like, I remember you. And she's like, I couldn't <laughs> believe that you were out there in a suit. And I'm like, yeah, it's just how we do it, you know? And she, people appreciate hard work. Like, I would appreciate hard work. I was telling my team today, um, I was like, I was like, guys, you have to tell your buyers what you're doing for them, right? Because the buyers have no idea what you're doing because they said, well, we lost the deal to, you know, this is before they jumped on the team. We lost, we lost this buyer. They bought through somebody else. I said, what were you doing? Were you telling them, hey, I'm, I'm going to spend three hours today reaching out to the neighborhood you're looking for to see if we can find you a home that you, you want to buy, right? Are you saying that to people? If somebody, if my car broker, because I got a guy that helps me find cars, if my car broker was to call me and say, hey, man, I called every single dealer in Florida. I called every dealer in Tennessee. I called every dealer in Nevada. Nobody has the car, but as soon as it becomes available, you're going to be first to know. I'm going to be like, that's the guy I'm going to use. Got it. David, David, let me piggyback on that really quick because yes. I want to ask you about the glossy flyer, make three hours for the phone calls and tie that into uh, create raving fans. So do, when you make calls, just listed, just sold, are you calling your clients right after and saying, hey, this is what I just did for you? Is the staff doing that? Or are you a secret agent like many of us that don't tell, don't share what we do? Yeah, that's a great question, man. So um, I, I, I don't, I tell them, okay, so at a very minimum, I'm communicating with all my sellers twice a week, okay? On Wednesdays, we're emailing them a weekly Wednesday update, okay? That includes how many days we've been on the market, how many showings we've had, what our feedback has been, what we've done in the last seven days to get your home sold, market analysis into what's happening uh, macro, like Phoenix Metro, and then local market analysis, what's happening micro within their community. So I do that every single Wednesday. Um, my listing coordinator does that for us. And every Friday I pick up the phone and I call all my sellers and recap what, what's happened this last week and ask them if they have any questions for the weekend. Now I'm doing that. That's what I've been doing for the last six years. Now I'm doing that probably three to four times. There's three to four touches every single week. So my sellers know hundred percent what I'm doing every single week. Got it. Great. Thank you. Appreciate that. Yes, that sir. was good intel. Thank you. All right. Good stuff. Very good stuff. Okay. Unmute yourselves, please. Unmute yourselves. Unmute yourselves. <laughs> Let's give him a really big hand. David. Thank you. All right. Good work. Good work. Good work. Good work. All right. Where did we go here? <clears throat> David, I, I know that we have, uh, uh, we talked about a hard stop here. It's a couple minutes after one. We appreciate big time your, your time, your effort, your energy. I say this all the time in life. You're either an inspiration or you're a warning. My friend, you are a giant inspiration. Appreciate it. Thank you. Thank you. Very much. Um, Thank you, buddy. We're going to go, we're going to go now and uh, kind of go around the room stay around here and just kind of learn what we learned today from you. You're welcome to hang out. Uh, if you have to go, we totally get it. And uh, we look forward to seeing you soon at the next retreat. Thank you so much. I'll talk to y'all soon. All right. Thanks, David. Thank Appreciate you, David. It. All right. Really, 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 really good stuff. Okay. what we learned today? Neil, can I start? It's Please. funny because we all uh, look into, we ask always the question, all of us, how many contacts a day? Do you still do the Saturday, Sundays? Do you still do evenings? We're all trying to find a way out of that. 
And the more and more interviews I listen to that you do, the only way out of that, it would be to get to the hundred plus, the more, the more successful you become, the less actually you have to grind. But it just, it's just that first five years, just put your head down, grind, and then it will go from there smoothly. And most of us don't. I'm guilty personally because I grind and then I stop. I grind and I start. If I grind just straight constant, then it, it, I won't have that. I would be just then I would say, oh, well, now I can't. I don't need to come on a Saturday. <laughs> so. No, Matab, you're you're right, and 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 uh, and even using the word grind, I mean, I, I don't think he thinks of it as a grind. Certainly not now, at, and it's been only doing six years. I mean, I've been doing this for fifty years, and and uh, I just don't see another way of doing it. And everybody else is trying to find another way, but yeah. there's no other yeah. there's no other way. Um, it no. doesn't. It, and I would get rid of the, what could we do to replace the word grind? Look for I, opportunities. Yeah, opportunity. I, I mean, I, I look at it, it's, I have to go out and talk to people anyway, so why not try to ask them for business instead? Yeah. <laughs> he, he used the word enjoy talking, or the sentence enjoy talking to people. Like he would wake up people. now excited talking to people, and that's really a mindset. Yeah. And, he's, yeah. and he's an analytical. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Talk to people possibly enjoy that Neil, yeah, i think the opposite of brian is buying buying oh buying interesting buy the business buy the like mike already said you can either buy it or, or go get it mm. yeah good point uh, that's that's a good point that's a good point all right I, what else did we learn today i love how he um I'm so guilty of this but the morning starts the night before. And I would say half the people in this phone call know exactly what we're talking about. He means there because I've done it and it works the next day and I'm efficient and energized and I hit my contact goals, but I don't do it again the next day. Right. And so one of the things for me is I'm going to, I'm going to really, I'm sick and tired of sick, feeling sick and tired of listening to that and not doing it on a consistent basis. So that's one. Thank you. I'm doing. Yeah, you're very close. I mean, you're doing very well. Don't get me wrong. Um, and and the conversations you've been having with me and others over the last few weeks and some of the questions that you're asking today, you're very close to a major breakthrough. Yeah, I don't I, take I, your eye off the ball, my friend. I believe that I just okay, we're going to we're going to see you on stage with two or three hundred deals. Yeah. OK, Miguel, yeah. you and I will be on stage next year. <laughs> I love it. We'll have the, the dancing duos. <laughs> it is. They're taking us along for the ride. Exactly, Armin. We're just, we're just in their world. It's their world, right? I love it. Hey, what else do we learn today? Armin, leveraging, leveraging, go ahead. Go ahead, Abigail, go ahead. I've learned that leveraging that listing to the max. So, you know. Do as much as, as much as I can, try to get another listing from it, market the heck out of it, you know? Absolutely. Absolutely. It's Good actually, one. Good one. I think it was one of the things we talked about on Tuesday, which was working to get another listing off of the listing you got. And uh, uh, on that note, Neil, when he said that, because we've done a class on that before next week, uh, I'm going to do a, a class on that. All right. I like and, it. And, and his third the, point there, Neil, his third point, because yeah. one was making calls, one was door knocking. His third point is, think about some of the newer agents on this, is co-listing with somebody. Uh -huh. I had made a, an expired phone call on a $3 million listing that I've never listed. I brought Neil Weichel into it. I just name dropped. Next thing you know, we're co-listing it. I end up getting a surprise check for 20 grand. I didn't really do much, but my point is we got to move our ego and bring somebody else in if it's something we don't feel 100% comfortable handling. There's nothing wrong with that. I can't tell you how many agents I make a recommendation like that to that have a multi-million dollar or million dollar lead in an area they shouldn't handle it themselves. And 
more than 80% of the time, they do not take my advice and they go try to get the listing themselves. What's a better, 100% of zero or 100% of 50%? Thank you, they, I agree. They, but, but some people don't get the math. Yeah, ego. Can you believe that there's actually agents that don't work for our company because we didn't give them 5% more? Do you believe that? No. I would understand 5%. They leave because we don't give them 5 cents more. <laughs> <laughs> We don't, we don't give away number two. That but that's good. Yeah. But, you know, that's, that's good because, you know, they don't waste your time. Thank you. It's, it's basically the non-motivated seller. Thank you. Yeah. <laughs> but my thing is, my thing is I actually believe I can help somebody. I really do yeah. think I can get, I can be the difference between somebody making, I, when I say I, I, or our organization can be the difference between somebody making um a hundred thousand dollars a year or three hundred thousand dollars a year i or the difference between 300 and 600 or but the difference between 600 and a million or between a million and a million and a half we prove it all the time but yeah. i don't know hey I, neil I no guess, doubt the value is there thank you what, what, what are the concerns i love the idea partnering up with a luxury listing. Are there any concerns with the sign in the yard, splitting commission? What are your thoughts on that? Whatever you guys agree to, but make sure you agree up front. And also leveraging the sale, right? I mean, if it's their sign, their list. Whatever listing, you all... agree, whatever you guys agree to, you have to there, you know, just make sure you're the co-listing agent if you want to be able to have the bragging rights. But there are some agents and we've co-listed with uh, because there were real high-end properties and they're real giants in that other area where they don't want to give you a 50-50 split. They want to give you 20% or 25%. And uh, so you have to you negotiate the deal and, and figure it out. Maybe that agent won't work well for you. Maybe you need somebody else. So um, it, it's all negotiable, but I'm here to tell every one of you Whatever it is, put it in writing and uh, both of you sign it and give a copy to your respective brokers. It doesn't have to be a 72 page contract. It just, if this, then that, if this, then that. That help, Brandon? Yes, sir. Thank you. Don't do it without some kind of paperwork because there's and if always- I need just a little advice on that because I've done it. It's more of, maybe I'm getting a less commission, but Along the way, I want to make sure I'm learning. So it's not like they are doing everything. I want to be doing a lot with them because I want to learn so I can do it later. Right. hundred percent. hundred percent. Like I'm giving you up. I'm giving up more of my commission because I want to learn. So right. there's a price to pay for that, which is fine, but you're not doing everything and cutting me off from not learning. Yeah, no, exactly. Okay. Um, what else did we learn here today? Customer service. Customer service, name of the game. He is exactly what Brady Sandals talked about on the stage. The customer, they, he's not in touch with the clients once a week. He's in touch with them three, four times a week. Exactly. And to do that, you're ahead, you're generally, by definition, ahead of their questions. Yes. So once a week isn't enough. I agree. All right. What else did we learn today? He really, he really epitomizes the comment that this is a simple business. It's just not easy. I mean, he's just, he's, everything is just super strong. He's a business guy, number one, but everything's just super structured. I get up at this time. I do this. I make this phone call. Then I do this and I do that. It's just, there was nothing there. I mean, he even said, you know, you asked him what his superpower was. He's like, I don't know. I just, I'm a pretty basic guy. You know, <laughs> I just do the things and, you know, it, it, it just, we constantly have to be reminded because there's so much noise in our business about disruptors and you can do this and you can do that. We have to constantly be reminded that it's really simple in order to make a good living in real estate. 
we are the ones that get in the way of that simplicity, which ends up costing us money. That's exactly right. Well, well said, Robert. Thank you. All right. Um, go ahead, Anna. You wanted to say something? I believe he's a super energy of power from his background because he knows family what they're living right before. And he said, I have liability. I want my family because of me. I want to better the life. That's only he saw that is what is before basement, what the parents are working. He said, I don't want to become that one. That you're thinking is by thinking and grow rich. The author that the sun ears cannot work in, but you still want to encourage yourself getting better. All the time. Good yeah. job. Great point, Anna. Thank you. Go ahead, Armin. I think <clears throat> piggybacking on that a little bit is he has an advantage that a lot of us here do not have. And what that is, he has his mom and dad. And I, I believe he said he was young. So he remembers a little bit about where they came from. And so that looks like when he talked about it at the beginning of the interview, like that was a big factor in, in how he works. No question. And, and I did ask him if he thinks that people didn't have those disabilities or those distractions if they could still make it. I was very specific about that because I want to remind everybody that just because your parents didn't put cigarettes out on your arm or you didn't have to live in the bottom of a basement and eat cake all day, all day long because that's the only food that was being done, you still can succeed in this business and succeed at a really high level. Uh, and we have many people that wear the badge that, oh, I come from nothing, so therefore I am nothing, so I can be nothing. And then you have people that say, I come from nothing and I want to have everything. And then you have the people that, the downtrodden that, oh, woe is me. So what do you want to be? You know, here's a guy that wanted to climb out and do what he needed to do. I'm the example of the guy whose parents didn't put cigarettes out on me. Um, they didn't have a lot of money, but uh, they're loving, caring people that put a nice roof over my head or put a roof over my head. And I knew I wanted more out of this life. And I, I like David, just put on blinders and worked my tush off as he does. You want, you want it in this life? You can have it but you better get up and go get it. Neil, I'm gonna make a suggestion here. And I think a lot of us, sometimes we get overwhelmed with doing this or doing that. And we hear, you know, title reps bringing, you know, hey, this is the magic pill. Here's my point. And don't, donuts. Have, don't forget the donuts. The donuts, right? <laughs> all, we all have breakdowns in our business and overwhelm. And I would suggest that this, this interview, which is one that I'm going to listen to over and over again, it's really the keeping the motion, like he keeps the emotions in between the lines and keeps it so simple that the reality is, is we should be watching this when we get stupid over here and just go back to the basics and very simple, just a simple, hard effort focused grind. Uh, this is probably one of the best interviews that I've, I've heard here. So, and I appreciate that. Yeah, it's interesting. It's very interesting. Honestly, we all make excuses of we want the technology, we want this, we want that. I had shadowed a few of the top producers, such as Mike Darden. And other than his cubicle, post-it notes, and the sheets, and his own phone to dial, nothing else. And a right. normal headset. It wasn't a fancy headset, just a normal headset. Are you picking <laughs> on my fancy headset again? <laughs> all well, right i'm just saying we look for excuses and and there's no excuse as he said your goals have to be bigger than your excuses that's exactly. the bottom line exactly exactly all right phenomenal stuff just phenomenal i i um i think it was just great and i appreciate his time effort and energy uh, let's see next week Next week, Robert Landon England. Landon England is going to speak for us. So uh, we've talked with him before and always been really good stuff. So um awesome. I think I'm on at one, right? <laughs> <laughs> yeah.
Yeah, you're on at one, Armin. Armin, you always take one o'clock, don't you? Best time of the day. Yeah, thir Thursday at one o'clock is Armin time. Who's at <laughs> one thirty, buddy? We got uh, Emily's at one, Frank at one thirty, Emily at two, Armin at two thirty, Dave at three, three thirty. I got a class on eight words that can change your business. Woohoo! So there we go. You guys are best. Thank you so much for everything. Thank, thank, you, thank you. you, thank you, thank you. Okay. You gotta run for previews. Love you guys. All right. What'd she say? She's gonna run for premiere. That's exactly. Previews. Yep. Yep. Previews. Yep. Exactly. <laughs> gotta go get some listings. <laughs> All right, everybody, good work. Thank you.